uh, not only just to the Faith Memorial Baptist Church, but uh, to the entire uh, state of Oklahoma. He's not only well known in Oklahoma, but all over the country. And so uh, I know that God is going to uh, be favorable to this congregation under the leadership of this fine young couple. And you can see, you tell a lot about a pastor when you look at his children. You can see how well disciplined they are. And uh, we already a little tearing away in here. <laughs> He's on his way. I thank God for all of these preachers that are here this afternoon. And, uh, like I said, I want to hurry up and get out of the way because uh, we've come to install your pastor. Your theme scripture is Jeremiah, the third chapter, verse number 15. It simply reads, I will give you shepherds according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And uh, if you will allow me, I just want to say to Reverend Hooks, feed them and lead them. Feed them and lead them. But let me just say a few words and then I'm not going to, I know everybody you know, the four weeks out, but this is his day. It's not my name. This is his day. And so uh, we're going to leave a thought or two with you and take my seat so we can get on with the installation. I come from the old school who said you get up, speak up, strike fire and sit down. <laughs> and that's old school stuff. Stand up, speak up, strike fire, and sit down. <laughs> Let me have your mind for just a moment. And I want to see if I can paint a picture on the chalkboard of your mind. Imagine yourself as a business or a professional person who has a great responsibility in the secular world and you have to speak before a conference of 100 or 200 or more people, your peers. And I wonder how much time would that person take to prepare his or her speech? Would it be two hours? four, five, and what if you had to speak to that same group two times or maybe three times all within the same week? How much time do you think it would take to prepare your message? Just the messages, not to speak of your regular duties. But what if you had to do that, to do more than just speak, make two or three speeches? What if you had to look after each of those 100 or 200 or 300 people personally? When one of them got sick, you'd have to go to the hospital. When one of their family members was hospitalized, they would expect you to go to the hospital. When a serious problem would arise, they would expect your presence. When counseling was needed, you were expected to be in your office. When a family member died, you were expected to visit the bereaved family. When a child got married, you were expected perform the ceremony and the counseling. Yeah. When a major committee met, right. yeah. you were expected to be in the meeting. Yes. Yeah. And on top of all of this, what if the professional person that you are had to manage the conference, its business, its work, its committees, its schedule, its finances, its building program, or whatever came up with all of the surrounding problems of management? What if that person had to 
be constantly out visiting and reaching new people to attend and join the conference association. What if that same person had to constantly face the scrutiny of his or her peers and handle in and all criticism and groanings and divisions that would come up? Most professional folk would throw up their hands, throw in the towel, walk off the job, and say, I quit. Yeah. You have this. But Pastor, this is your job. This is the task of the pastor. It's a job that's humanly impossible. That's why the scripture says, but with God, all things are possible. And you have to understand that you are God's minister. You're his chosen servant. You're the one whom he has set in this particular place, in this particular time. Let me just say something to you right now. Some of you probably are going to look with a jaundiced eye at me when I tell you that God did not send him here. God did not see to it that he's here because of the committee that came. And I want you to remember this. God did not send him. God brought him. Which means that God is right here with you. Right now. Put your hands together. See, there's a difference. sit somewhere. But when God brings you, He's right there with you. Whispering in your ear. Telling you which way to turn. What move to make. God is with you. And when Moses was out there on the backside of the mountain, and he saw this burning bush heard God's voice calling his name. And did you ever realize that there wasn't anybody out there but Moses and yeah. Moses? Right. Moses knew whose voice yeah. spoke to him. Right. And it did not matter whether anybody, it doesn't matter whether we're here or not. Yeah. We, can, we can go home right now. God brought him here. Yeah. God knows, God knows, God knows every joy, every pleasure, every ache, every burn, every cry, every tear. God knows every trial, every temptation. And God knows every person who criticizes and opposes and persecutes and every duty and demand you face. God knows it. Every firm that you must prepare and deliver the pressure of it. Every burden that you must bear, every care that you have for the church, and every moment of disappointment and discouragement that you face, God knows. Now, the job of the preacher, the job of the pastor, it's, it's, it's an impossible job without God. But I just want to say to you, for the benefit of those of you who may not uh, know this, Pastor has to, uh, he must solicit his own class. He must heal. Uh, he does it without pills, medicine, or scalp. Oh, yeah. He's sometimes a lawyer, often a social worker, something of an editor, a bit of a philosopher, an entertainer, he's a salesman, a decorative piece for public function, and a student and a star. Visiting the sick, marrying people as I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. 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 Company to the read. <laughs> and on top of this, he still got to prepare sermons that are stimulating and interesting and convincing and convicting yeah. and persuasive. Yeah. And some folk got the nerve to walk up to him and pat him on the back and say, Man, 
for the job only one day a week. <laughs>